Hi, I'm Sidney Pollack. I'm your host for the Essentials here on Turner Classic Movies. Every week we introduce a movie that has stood the test of time, a movie that's become essential for anyone who wants to be a fully qualified classic movie fan. Speaking of time, it's been very, very good to this next movie. The movie's called The Red Badge of Courage, and it was a failure when it came out in 1951. Didn't do much business, didn't get much attention in general. But you look up this movie now, it's five stars, thumbs up, highest rating, all that stuff. I can only tell you that I like this movie a lot, and I, I want to take a stab at describing it in, in terms of competing values. And I, I, I don't want to launch into some big cinematic theory here, but there's a pattern in terms of competing values. First, competing values in the movie business in general. When The Red Badge of Courage came out, there was a power struggle going on at MGM. Louis B. Mayer, who'd done more than anybody to build the studio's glitz and glamour image, didn't want to make this movie at all. He didn't think anybody would want to see a Civil War movie, much less one that was grim and literary, as The Red Badge of Courage was. But meanwhile, there was a new guy, Dory Sherry. He was being groomed to take over at MGM. Now, Sherry cared more about content and meaning, about movies that made statements. The Red Badge of Courage was a pet project of his. So here you had Louis B. Mayer, the entertainment, give the people what they want type, against Dory Sherry, the content, movies with a message type. Next set of competing values is something you're going to notice watching the movie, and it's the physical action of the film. The nature of war versus the style of the director, John Huston. About the action, as they say, war is hell, and in the case of Civil War, those battles in particular, it's mayhem, violence, panic, desperation, people running and shooting all over the place, and at least outwardly, terribly disorganized. In direct contrast to that, you have John Huston's technique with the camera, which brings a kind of beauty and order to everything you see. In this movie, he stages the action and moves the camera in a way that seems lyrical, almost balletic. He uses long takes with complicated action, often in wide master shots, in a way that helps you see how the characters relate to each other and to their surroundings. That's the second pair of competing values. The madness of warfare versus the beauty and lyricism of John Huston's cinematic vision. The third pair exists inside the story itself. The Red Badge of Courage is a story of, of one soldier who's just referred to as the youth in the original novel by Stephen Crane. His internal struggle is between courage and cowardice. He's a young, confused man who's under enormous pressure, and he's faced with life and death decisions. He's desperately afraid, but also desperate to prove himself. That's the inner conflict, the third pair of competing forces, which drive this movie. Now let's go back to the first pair for a second. Turns out that Louis B. Mayer was right. This movie did not go over. It didn't even go over with preview audiences. It wound up getting cut down from well over two hours to just over one hour. And that missing footage, by the way, is gone. It's forever. Nobody saved the original print. But also, I want to mention Audie Murphy, who plays the lead. He became a movie star after he became the single most decorated American soldier in World War II. And we're going to talk about him later. This is a, a pretty remarkable movie that embodies so many conflicts and turned out to be so much better than it seemed at the time. From 1951, John Huston's The Red Badge of Courage. Henry Fleming, the youth, was played by Audie Murphy, who was still in his 20s when he made The Red Badge of Courage. Back during World War II, he'd become nationally famous as America's most decorated GI. He received 24 decorations became a national hero. Audie Murphy got into the movies in the late 40s being boyishly handsome in a bunch of low-budget westerns. And most people agree his next best movie after The Red Badge of Courage was To Hell and Back in 1955, the movie based on his own autobiography. But his movie career was only so-so, and in the 1960s, he had a series of business failures. Audie Murphy died in a private plane crash in 1971 when he was just 46.